Hello everyone, this is Serious Trivia, and today we're concluding our What's in a Chinese Name series as we're going to wrap up things with nicknames and posthumous names. Now, unlike the previous two episodes where we covered surnames, clan name, first name, and style name, nicknames and posthumous names are not related to one's family or clan and thus have a much greater degree of freedom of choice. This is especially the case with nicknames, which can refer to a lot of different concepts. For example, we have the regular nickname that you and your friends give to yourselves, such as the case of the Sleeping Dragon for Zhuge Liang, or the Fledgling Phoenix for Pang Tong. Then you can also have family nicknames in the case of baby names such as A Man, which was the name of Cao Cao. And in the case of baby names, it's no longer called Hao, but rather Ru Ming or Xiao Ming literally meaning baby name or little name. Then you can also have religious nicknames, such as one's Taoist title, which are called Dao Hao, which can be equated to celestial master title for Zhang Lu, or Tian Gong Jiangjun, or the general of heaven for Zhang Jiao. And the same can be said for Buddhist ones, where we have monk names called Fa Hao, now, Buddhism really didn't take root in China during the Three Kingdoms period for me to provide an example from this time period. But using another one of the four classics of Chinese literature, we can use Journey to the West to identify the Fa Hao for the Monkey King, as Wu Kong was his Fa Hao, which is why he is often referred to as Sun Wu Kong. Now, there isn't too much to add about nicknames in general, since it's definitely the one type of name where you have the most liberty in choosing for yourself. So for the remainder of this episode, we're going to shift gears and focus on shi, or posthumous name. Now shi is also often referred to as shi hao, and it means the same thing. But for those who are familiar with Chinese, you might notice that in modern day Chinese, we often use phrases for many of these concepts that we've been talking about in this series, for example, surnames today are often referred to as xing shi instead of just xing. Names are called ming zi instead of just ming. And posthumous names or titles are often referred to as shi hao. And this use of multiple character phrases came about during the Song Dynasty, when the Chinese language shifted away from using the standard one character, one meaning approach in favor of combo character phrases that we are more familiar with today. But back to our topic of shi or shi hao, which means posthumous name or title. And as the name posthumous suggests, this is a name or title that one receives after death. More importantly, not everyone can receive a shi or shi hao, as it's reserved for only loyalties and key officials of the imperial court. And only the emperor can award posthumous name or titles to officials, whereas officials will gather up and decide on a posthumous name or title for the previous deceased emperor. And these posthumous names and titles are usually just one or two characters long that summarizes the life and contribution of the deceased. And while historically, posthumous names started with only positive terms called shang shi and neutral terms called ping shi. By the late Zhou dynasty, negative terms called xia shi were also introduced as a means to punish cruel rulers by giving them a bad name after death. Of course, if you're not a loyalty and you're not important enough to receive an official shi hao from the court, your family can create private posthumous names called si shi, but that is more or less along the line of a nickname and beyond the scope of our discussion here, so in order to learn more about posthumous name, let's start using some examples from the Three Kingdoms period to aid us. And starting with the Kingdom of Wei, we have the posthumous name for Cao Cao's family members. Now, I am not going to include Cao Cao and Cao Pi and Cao Reis because emperors get temple names, which is very similar to posthumous names but have many more characters since emperors are much more important, but they serve the same function. So for the sake of simplicity, we're going to skip temple names and just focus on the posthumous names for the less important relatives who never got a chance to be emperor, as well as key officials 
who are honored enough to get their own posthumous names. And we're going to start off with someone like Cao Ang, who was Cao Cao's eldest son and Cao Pi's older brother, who died in the ambush at Wan City. And his posthumous name is Feng Min Wang. Now, the first character, Feng, here is a location. It has nothing to do with his posthumous name. It refers to a given piece of title land to him, in this case, a princedom. Now, to be clear, princedom does not necessarily mean they have to be a prince in terms of being the son to the emperor, but rather a title. So it's a translation issue as the third character of these titles, Wang, means king or prince, depends on how you do the localization. And in this case, it's definitely the prince title. So while he was alive, if he had the title, it would be Prince of Feng or Feng Wang. But now that he's dead, he gets a posthumous name and it's inserted in the middle of his title. So his posthumous name is Mian. And all the posthumous names have very detailed descriptions and meanings. In this case, Mian is given to someone who was killed during a national tragedy, in this case referring to the ambush at Wan. Then if we look at Cao Zhang's posthumous name, Ren Cheng Wei Wang, we'll see a very similar structure. The first two characters here, called Ren Cheng, is the word for the city of Ren, which is his given title land. And Wang, the final character, once again is king or prince, so basically you have his living title. And the third character here, Wei, is his post-humorous name. And this character means fierce, decisive, and unforgiving. And it's quite fitting for Cao Zhang, as he was a well-respected fighter and general. And comparing that with Cao Zhi, who is best known as a poet, we have Chen Si Wang. So Chen and Wang here, once again, refers to the princedom of Chen. And his posthumous name of Si means thoughtful. Now, not all posthumous names need to be unique either. For example, Cao Bing, Cao Chong, Cao Xie, Cao Li, Cao Yan, and Cao Yin were all I for their posthumous name. And this character is given to those who died young. So these are often prince who did not survive their childhood. Now, of course, they don't have the exact same title because their living princedom will be different, but the posthumous name they receive will be all the same because it's supposed to summarize your life. And for these who did not live to adulthood, their best summary is they died too young, which is a reflection by the character I, which has the meaning of sadness. And as we mentioned before, posthumous names are not only given to royalties, but also key officials. And for the kingdom of Wei, throughout their history, there were 85 officials that received posthumous names. And we're just going to look at a few of them. For example, Zhang Liao, known for his fierce defense of Hefei, was awarded the posthumous name of Gang Ho. Now the second character here, or the final character here, is no longer Wang, because these are not princes. Ho means marquis, so it's still a title, but there is no land assigned for some of them. In this case, Gong would just be his posthumous name, and Gong means strong, fierce, and brave. Then we have Xun Yu, a key advisor for Cao Cao, and he was given the posthumous name of Jing Ho, where Jing means respected. Now, during the Three Kingdoms period, court officials were not divided into civil officials and military officials, as it would become the case after the Song Dynasty. So most of the posthumous names we have for officials just use one character, and they can be repeated. For example, both Cao Ren and Xia Hou Dun were Zhong Hou, where Zhong means loyalty. But once the history progresses and the court is clearly divided between civil and military, as in the case of the Ming Qing period, the posthumous names for officials would also become two characters long, with the first character denoting them as either a civil official or a military one. For example, the civil officials would always start out with the character of Wen, meaning scholar, and the military officials would get the starting character of Wu, or marshal. 
And there is a third one called Zhong, which means loyalty. And this is for officials who had served in both a civil and a military role during their careers. And not only did you have rules for the first character, the second character also evolved by this time period to no longer just being a summary of one's contribution, but rather just a ranking system with strict rules. So for civil officials with the character Ven, they can be followed by all these characters listed below here, and the list is ordered by importance. So if you are an extremely important civil official during the Mingqing period, regardless of what you did while you are alive, if you're deemed important enough, you'll get the first character in this list and your posthumous title will become Wen Zheng. And of course, the same is applied for military officials as well as mixed officials with their separate ranking listed below. Now at the end of our episode here, let's continue to take a look at some of the Three Kingdoms officials who actually got two character posthumous names due to their importance for their kingdom. And surprisingly, there are only three, and they all belong to the kingdom of Shu Han, as we have Zhuge Liang, with the name of Zhong Wu Hou, where Zhong means loyalty, and Wu meaning martial. And these were obvious tributes to his loyalty to Liu Bei, even after Liu Bei's death, and his relentless military campaigns north in a fruitless effort to try to restore the Han. Then we also have Guan Yu, who had the posthumous name of Zhuang Miu Ho, where Zhuang means brave and strong. But the second character here, Miu, is actually not a good term, as it's often used to describe someone who harms others through their words, reflecting Guan Yu's excessive pride and arrogance, which is actually rather interesting, given Guan Yu's importance to Liu Bei. But considering how he ended his life with a failed campaign, it's understandable that he gets a good one and a bad one as a mixed posthumous name. Then finally, we have Zhao Yun, who had the posthumous name of Shun Ping Ho, with Shun meaning just and kind, and Ping meaning someone who ended rebellions and brought peace. Now, to be fair, we'll also include some Wu officials in this list as well, since there were only actually six officials from the entire history of the kingdom of Wu who would actually receive posthumous names, and there are Sun Shao who was the first prime minister of Wu, who ended up getting the name of Su Ho, with Su meaning decisive. Then Zhang Zhao got the posthumous name of Wen Ho, meaning scholarly or wise, while his son Zhang Cheng got Ding Ho, which means someone who cared about the people. Wu Yong, the second prime minister of Wu, got the name of Su Ho as well, and Lu Xun will get Zhao Ho, which means someone who is diligent, while his son, Lu Kang, will get Wu Ho, which means martial, for his strong military performances. And with this, we're going to be wrapping up our episode here and our series as well on what's in a Chinese name. Hopefully you all enjoy this series, and I will see you all next week when we return to Three Kingdoms history with a new series covering Sun Quan's upbringing, from his birth to the Battle of Tribi. So until then, Bye.